So what is this channel about? It's about making the best malted barley a person can. Um, you're going to learn how to take the barley and turn it into a malted uh, with different toast um, to be able to make the beers that you want. Um, in the beginning, you learn how to uh, sort, where to buy, how to hydrate it, what to look for. Um, we'll then go through the drying phase, and then finally the roasting or toasting stage. Um, there are many different ways we can do this with ovens, with uh, grills, and um, each one has its own reasons. It's, some of them are easier, some of them are faster, um, but the end result is always a little different. Um, so through this process, you're going to see um, each step and how you can easily and um, have a good time making your own malted barley. It's a very simple process. They've been doing it for centuries and centuries. The Egyptians and as far back as our, our um, Arcadians were, have been making beer. So it doesn't take technology. It just takes the know-how to do it. It's actually very easy. And um, if you can make beer, you can definitely malt barley. It'll be a great experience, and I hope you enjoy uh, join me. And please subscribe. It helps me. And uh, I will have, um, from time to time, a, a downloadable uh, PDF file. So you're able to actually have a visual, you know, to put on your iPhone or to just have to print out. Uh, make it easier for you to follow along or just have with you if you want to go back and forth between the videos and your process. Um, I hope these things help you out, and I appreciate your subscription. Thank you. So what we are doing is hydrating the berries so that they can start growing roots and then the shoot, which gives us our sugars. We can't let the berries stay in water for too long or they'll start dying or getting mold or other things will start growing inside of them. So when we first put water in them, we sort it. After we sort it, we take the we let it sit in the water for the first, second, and third um, uh, hydrations, and then we uh, screen it out, or we take the water out, and we let it sit for about 68 hours each time. And each time, then it builds the sugars until it starts to sprout. Then immediately, we need to take it to be um, to uh, shoot in the next uh, in the next phase.
let the berries soak for five or six hours for the first soaking. Uh, make sure that they're immersed. Uh, you don't want any above because they're not going to soak in that water. Uh, and then we drain the water through a screen or a calendar. Um, you can also drill holes in the bottom of a pot, pour it in there, it'll seep right through. Um, if we allow the water, to, if you allow the berries to sit in water, what happens is they'll die because they need to breathe. They need that, they need that process of soaking and that drying enough to where it breathes and it's able to um, uh, grow roots. If it stands, if the seeds stand in water for too long, more than eight hours, uh, they will actually start to die and then those berries will be dead. And then as you go through the multiple so soakings and then the sprouting phase, you'll get molds, you'll get mildews, you'll get uh, black spots. Uh, these things can and will happen. And if you don't catch them in time, they'll end up imparting a, a taste to your beer that is unwanted. So um, it's very important to make sure that the berries do not sit in the water uh, at any time other than the soaking, at the soaking levels. Um, during the second uh, soaking, um, we do it for a little, we do it for a little less time, uh, between three and four hours. Um, the drying is always the same. The, um, the, the getting the water, get off the water is always the same. And, uh, because the berries need that time to breathe. They need that, it's like a rain comes in and it soaks everything and then it dries and then the rain comes again and soaks. Uh, we're just mimicking what's in nature, a natural uh, phenomenon in nature. And at each process we're also, we're, we're scooping it out, we're making sure there's no more debris. Each time we're, um, we're clarifying the, the, the grain. Uh, anything that comes up, of course, is, needs to be pitched and thrown. And then the last one is two or three hours. And at this point, you should almost, uh, should for sure start seeing uh, nubbins being the roots, the rootlets starting to grow on the bottom of the, of the grain. Um, uh, of course, I'll show you uh, what that looks like. Um, and when that happens, and you see that, that's when you need to get it off the soaking and get it on to uh, the next step. We're going to talk about soaking and sorting of our grains. This may seem simple, but great care must be taken to take out the materials, the foreign materials, uh, from your grain, uh, especially organic. Uh, they have a lot more. You could have corn, some in there. You could have um, maybe wheat instead of barley. It, you'll be able to pull out of these uh, foreign materials that you don't want to be in the beer, uh, the final product. Uh, we sold or any of the foreign materials and the bad berries from the malting process. Uh, we do this by we add water to the berries themselves and as, the, if, as it fills the bad berries will float. Uh, usually, um, usually berries float because they are infested. They have something in them that was growing. A bug got in there and created a pocket of air and it, therefore it floats. So any of the berries that come to the top surface we want to scoop those out. Just they come, they'll pull right out. Um, and other foreign materials, sticks, uh, grasses, anything dry like that will pop right to the surface and we just sort that right out, we just throw that out and uh, and it becomes very clean. We then scoop in there and kind of flush all the bad materials out. So as we are, as it fills we're just constantly sorting it and, and uh, the foreign material comes up, we throw it out and pretty soon it's going to be where there's nothing on top, just water and the berries inside, and then we let that soak. Now some of the benefits, even though it's part of the process of um, getting the berries to sprout, uh, it also has a huge uh, um, effect on the berries. And uh, you can look up an article on Google about uh, soaking like rice uh, to get out the toxins and um, from the ground uh, from previous many years before. Um, by doing this, we're actually every time we soak the berries, it's absorbing water and it's flushing out um, a lot of these toxins. Uh, and we actually do it three in three series. Of, uh, of soakings. And each time we do that soaking, it actually pulls out more and more 
uh, if there are any toxins or foreign materials inside the berries and pulls them right out. Uh, in the article of, uh, for rice, it's like 70, 80 percent just let it soak overnight um, to pull out those toxins. So it really has a, uh, a real impact, um, this process of letting the berries soak, sorting, and then letting them uh, dry, set, uh, so they can start to sprout.